<laughs> Hello folks, my name is George Amadova. I'm a licensed broker in the state of Florida. I'm also a broker with Bay Alago Brokerage Inc. And today I have a couple of information that I want to share with prospect buyers, first time home buyers. So if you're thinking of buying a home or you're a renter, I want you to pay close attention because this could actually save you a lot of money in compounding interest. Okay, number one, a lot of people have a myth and they go online and they'll go to different like True Advantage or many different credit uh, reporting agencies. And what I want you to become aware that you want to know what 92% of the lenders know and use, which is FICO. Fair Isaac created a system in which they use depository information from Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian to come out with a score, which we know as a FICO score. So you want to make sure that you know what the lenders know. All right, which is why you want to log on to www.myfico.com with them directly and no one else. All right. Now, there are five factors that consist of your FICO score. Okay. And here are the five factors. One is payment history, which is uh, 35%. Two is amount owed, which is 30% of your FICO score consists of. Three is the length of credit, which is 15% of your total score. Four is new credit, which is 10%. And last but not least, it's the type of credit used, which is another 10%. So your payment history, you want to make sure you have a long payment history, okay? Because that's 35% of your score. That's the largest factor that creates a credit score. So your payment history will consist of any derogatory information, how long you uh, have credit, how are your times as far as making those payments on time. So it's going to look at all those factors. And it's going to look at different types of credit, which is right here, different types of credit. So you wanna have different trade accounts. For example, installment loan, like a car. You wanna have credit cards. You wanna have maybe a mortgage, okay? So you wanna have maybe a retail store. So those are different types of credit that will help you improve your credit score. Now, payment history, okay? Another type, number two, is amount owed. You wanna make sure, because FICO looks at what is called your overall utilization ratio. Okay, so you don't want to exceed 30% of your overall utilization ratio. So it does look at every credit card and every credit item, but it also look at individually. So even if you have an individual credit card, for example, let's say $1,000, well, you don't want to exceed 30%. 30% in this case will be $300. Once you start exceeding over 30%, your credit score starts dropping. So I want you to keep that in mind. Also, be careful the types of credit used because let me give you, for instance, some credit will actually damage your credit. For instance, American Express. American Express, if you have, a, say, American Express and you have an available $20,000, as an example, right? But yet, you only use $1,000 because American Express doesn't report your total available credit. What happened is that even if you owe $1,000, it's going to seem as you max it out, which is why, remember, the overall utilization ratio, you want to be very careful with that, depending on other types of credit that you have. So, if you have a $1,000 credit, again, don't go above $300, which is 30%. Try to keep it below that and your score will be maximized, all right? Now, amounts owed, as I just stated, make sure, because that's 30% of your credit score. Another one that affects your score that most people don't know is length of credit, which is 15%. So, the longer the, your length, the higher your credit. So, please do not close out credit cards. You don't know how many times somebody's going to buy a house and they have a lot of credit, say, okay, this is a myth, let me close these credit cards off. No, please do not do that. That's gonna affect your credit score because it's affecting your length of credit history. So do not do that, all right? Now, another um, thing people do is, okay, well, I'm not gonna close it out, but I'm not gonna use it. That affects the type of credit use, but it also affects the length of credit, which is what? 15%. Why you don't wanna do that? Because your credit card, if you have what is called inactive, right? That affects 15% and after for over three months, that's gonna drop your score of 15%. And that may be all you need to qualify for a home. Granted, there are other factors such as debt to income ratio, but as far as credit, you wanna have at least a 580 and above, right? So if you have not used a credit card for over three months, go out there, gas up your car, pay it back, so at least that will improve your length of credit and it will not be inactive because that will definitely affect your score. New credit, please, if you're buying a house or, or buying a car, do not apply for new credit. New credit will help you in the long run. But when you apply for new credit right now, it may be interpreted as you are buying 
or looking to overextend yourself, and that could definitely affect your score. Especially if you get what is called inqu inquiries. You don't want to have many inquiries because that will last in your credit report for two years, and it'll affect you at least for one year. So you don't want to have a lot of inquiries. Now, on my book, I'm the author of the No BS in Making Millions in Real Estate. There's information on how to remove derogatory information. But again, I don't do that no more because I'm a licensed broker. But we do know great credit restoration companies that may assist you. Okay, we work with them to help you. One thing I want to mention, which is another myth, please, if you have a third party collector coming after you, when they call you, never say you owe anything. Okay, that third party collector, they normally bought it for pennies on the dollar, yet they want to charge you on bad debt. Be careful with that, okay? If they say you owe X amount, you always say, allegedly I owe what? So never say that you owe it, number one. And never make a payment on that. Speak to a professional first that may be able to remove that because technically you have no contract with them. So you want to be careful with that. Another thing is you don't want to start a payment plan with them because this is what happens. It may start the process again of, on the reporting agency, which is normally seven years. It'll start again and you don't want that. Okay, because it's just going to damage your credit score. You may want to deal with a company that's going to do what is called pay for delete, all right, which is they'll pay, but they'll have it in writing and they have to agree to delete it off the credit report. And there are other factors that they report correctly according to, you know, Fair Credit Reporting Act. So there are many little issues that you may not be aware of that we could assist you, okay? Um, keep in mind, I remember when I started in Bushwick, I was, you know, from humble beginnings. I couldn't get credit. I had no family to give me credit to help me. But if you have a family member that has excellent credit and you ask them to please, uncle, aunt, can you add me as an authorized user? Their credit history on that specific type of credit card will now show up on yours, improving your credit score drastically. And the way I will convince them is, that, like I did, listen, I'm not looking to damage your credit. I'm looking to improve my credit. You can hold on to the credit card because all I want to do is improve my credit score because I want to buy a home. That's one way. Another way is you can go online, for example, Orchard. Yes, they have a high interest rate. Okay, you may want to try Capital One. But what they do is get you a, what is called a secure credit card. So you may want to get a secure credit card or a secure loan in which you deposit, say, like $500 in a bank, right? And your own money, they'll lend it back to you as a credit card. And it'll be secured because if you don't pay it back, they'll grab your money, basically, right? But you're able to establish credit and within six months, right? God willing. They will remove the secure credit and now they'll apply their own money and they'll increase it so now you have credit. For those that can't have a family with an authorized user, that's another great way to start credit, building credit. Okay, so keep in mind 580 credit score. Uh, again, there are other factors. So if you think you don't qualify, speak to a professional. We are experts. Come to us. Let us assist you because you may be surprised. You may qualify to buy in a home. Okay, you don't want to be a renter all your life. Because you are losing, number one, equity buildup, which is net wealth. You're losing the, uh, your future for your kids. It is a fact that kids that are from homeowners have better education, uh, graduate more. So there's a lot of studies in this. Okay, so you wouldn't want to consider that. Also, when you are a renter, you're giving money away, right? I mean, you're paying for a service, but you keep throwing money away. Well, when you buy a house, you're paying what is called mortgage. Most of your mortgage is interest. So that interest, based on your tax bracket, marginal tax bracket, is tax deductible. You may want to speak to a CPA about that. Okay, so keep that in mind, uh, as well as you are paying down part of the principal, so you are reducing the, what you owe, the note, right? You're reducing, so you're building that work because one, you're reducing what you owe, two, the house is appreciating in value, so you're building equity, thus your net worth. I hope this helped. Please like comment, and share. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to George Amadovar. I'm the broker with Belalago Brokers Inc. Thank you for watching. God bless.